software kind of side. And uh, probably it's just a matter of, of their roadmap just going forward super fast and shipping this new feature, this new mm -hmm. solution out faster than they thought. Mm. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they had, you know, had been working on an operating system, but, but you know, these are, you know, usually the roadmaps for these take, you know, years, not, not months yeah. and months. But yeah, definitely. I think, I think they're definitely going to double down now and, and say, right, okay, now's, now's the time to sort of to build our own iOS build our own OS operating system and, and go for it. So I think we're live now. So I'd like to welcome all the people who are watching. You know, I was just having a fascinating conversation with, with our guest speaker about you know, the big things that are hitting products at the moment. Uh, I hope nobody will have missed it. You know, the input of both Games of Thrones finale, which I've not watched yet. So, so no, no spoilers, please. Um, but also you know, Highway and uh, sorry, Huawei and the implications on Google and the implications on Huawei. We were talking about you know, the, the product roadmap for a lot of people in Huawei has probably been so severely disrupted now. And there's going to be a lot of people at a lot of levels thinking, you know, what do we do now? Where do we put our future bets? And I think one of the things we sort of we discussed was you know, probably in their own operating system. But who knows? Definitely. Yeah, yeah definitely. So I'd like to welcome everybody to um, Scale Up Valley podcast. You know, we, in the past, we talked a lot about building the right thing, how you decide what to build to make sure you're building the most valuable um, piece of code or product for your customers and for your business. Now, hopefully, we're going to bring it down sort of to more into execution um, with, with my guest speaker. But quickly before that, I'd just like to point out that you know, anybody can go and see previous podcasts um, that we've talked through and discussed. Uh, and also uh, join us on the community, uh, siliconvalley.com forward slash community and find out, uh, engage with people like myself and other you know, product professionals, as well as see some of these previous podcasts. But now the introduction's done, I'm sort of you know, super excited to uh, introduce um, my guest that I'd love to um, learn more about and learn more about how they execute, uh, Dene Vara, um, VP of product from Redpoint. So I'd love to, love to have a quick introduction about who you are, what you're doing, what the business is doing right now. Hi, well, thank you for having me. Um, well, here at Redpoints, I don't know if you're, you're familiar or whoever is not familiar with, uh, we're a software technology company. We are working with building our own, our own tech and solutions, our products. We basically, what we do is we help brands uh, be in control and protect their brands online, anywhere in the internet, be in their marketplaces, social media, e-commerces or, or anywhere in the web. So if you have a brand and you and you want to keep it protected from fakes, from counterfeits, from being sold online in a not legal way or in a, in a way you're not supposed to be doing it, um, that's why we're here for. We, we help brands, small, big, medium size, uh, get the control of what their, their, their IP is. So for many companies, their products or their content, their digital content being their movies, books, magazines, whatever, it's their, their main assets. That's what drives wealth and that's what, that what drives the, the value of the brand itself, especially on luxury brands. So having that, those assets protected online, it's our, our most uh, priority, as well as having you have some, visual, um, some being aware of how your brand is being sold online, either it be by your partners, by whoever you don't know who they are, or by someone who's trying to do some illegal ma ma management there. And um, we help them through technology. We use several cases of, of I mean, so several applications of machine learning al algorithms. Uh, we use uh, technology just to, to make it easier and faster to scan the web, download everything that's needed to be downloaded, check whatever it needs to be checked or double checked, and enforce whatever needs to be enforced and taken down. So, so your clients, your final end users have a very good um, benefits of your brand and a nice experience and not, not mm -hmm. have a bad one there. So yeah, that's, that's what, basically what we do at Redpoint. And uh, I, was, I, I was, before we, we came live, uh, I was just explaining a little bit how, how things have changed now so far and how things evolved. Um, a couple of years ago, the company was, uh, I think we were around 50 persons, the company, the whole company. And uh, our tech, uh, call it product slash development team, Mm. We're about six persons, so that was pretty small. Mm. And now you fast forward two years, and um, we're around 200 altogether. We have offices in the U.S., in New York, and here in Spain. And um, our tech team, both including development and product, we're over 50 persons right now. So that that grew and scaled up pretty fast as well. I mean, of course, that company has been growing. So yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I think that's really interesting. I think just quickly, just going back to what the company does, you know, if you look at now how easy it is to copy something yeah. um, and and to, to have your brand polluted, you know, people put a lot of work into thinking about new ideas, thinking about branding and building it. And it's, you know, you, you put blood, sweat and tears in, into, into what you've built. And then, you know, to see a, a, a cheap, you know, knockoff is, is, is sometimes heartbreaking, especially with all that work. And yeah. As you're seeing now, competitive advantage being eroded in different areas. You know, brand is one of those things that 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 is really hard to that, you know, that that is really hard to sort of maintain going forwards, and is one of the few last elements of competitive advantage. So to see that come under attack, it come, you know, you you to sort of prevent that attack and sort of being protecting that, I think, is incredibly valuable. It's good to see sort of you know somebody else has been through the sort of scale up problems that that we're going through at Minis and that you know a lot of our you know listeners and, and people who are watching are also going through you know how do you go from small teams to big teams and keep keep operating at speed I'd, I'd love really lo- love to know sort of when you started them now has there been a difference in do you feel there's been a difference in sort of time to market or execution oh yeah definitely I mean there have been so many changes in so many different aspects so even from the product itself that we were building I mean we came to inherit, let's say, a monolithic kind of solution that we had to transform into, you know, move the services and making everything so so scalable and so even scalable for 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 the amount of of clients that we grew so much in this past couple of years. So uh, that was one of our our based um, investments that we could do. But of course, that that not always brings a lot to to the clients, no, to the to the business side. Mm. So you have to kind of balance both things, balance the way how you keep on growing and, 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 and establishing your, your own products and your own technology, and also keep on bringing product, I mean, and, and features and, and value to, to our customers uh, that, that want new things to see. So that thing is a challenge, but I think that one of the biggest challenges as well is it's not only about scaling up like in the company, growing from this to that, but also onboarding all these teams, all these people that, that are new to the company. What we do, it's not easy. It's not uh, simple. It's, it's quite complex and it has some legal background to it. It has technology to it. So it makes it kind of, a, a, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, it, gets, it gets complicated, but in a, in a good way because it's mm-hmm. always interesting and it keeps evolving and it keeps changing. So just like you were saying, with uh, nowadays it's so easy to get to to have something made a copy of um mm. that also ha- makes our our business and our area go faster and grow faster and adapt faster so it's always uh, it always keeps you on your toes mm. going fast everywhere but th- that is that sounds great when you have a team of 50 from day one and you keep the same theme till two years later and you keep on building now when you have this scaling up from day one to day 200 or whatever you keep on adding and you start growing your team you have to do a lot of of, of work on the on the management part on hiring mm-hmm. the right profiles on making sure you have all the protocols all the procedures everything is structured because when someone joins um at the beginning you might have time to you know walk with them the whole month or two months and have them ramp up but when you have, I don't know, uh, 30 people, 40 people coming in the past two years, you have to have a system to make this work and have everyone ramped up to in order to be uh, productive. Because if not, mm. yeah, that's just a lot of people there. Yeah, I think I think completely agree. These are the nice problems to have. You know, we're growing so fast. We need to hire loads more people. I think you know, those are really the, the, the nice problems obviously it doesn't make them easy but they're the nice problems to have and i think you, you you mentioned you know a lot of different things from hiring the right people to to onboarding people you know which are, which are, which i really think is is key so let's 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 zoom in there so how do you how do you help people get up to speed really quickly sure that was one of our let's say our side projects uh, on the product team so when we start building the product team uh, the product team here at red points um I created like a, this kind of different structure. It's not what usually you will find in a product team company because you usually have UX designers and product managers. Well, we have these parts, but we also have QA and we also have support and we also have machine learning and we also have data analysis. All of these under the product umbrella. I mean, if you're a product company, basically anything will fit under the product umbrella. So yeah. there. Um, but we do a lot of interesting things here. So one of the projects was 
working with the support team to work in a proactive way of support, not only the reactive way, mm. like you would think you have a problem with the platform, you contact support and you get help, yeah. but more on a proactive team, which is a lot of training and documentation and procedures and understanding how things work. Mm -hmm. So we don't only do that for our customers, but we also do that internally. Okay. So what we did is um, we're collaborating with the HR team. Of course, when you grow, you have to collaborate in any ways possible because no one can do everything by themselves. Mm -hmm. So collaborating with the HR team, what we've been building right now uh, so far is a, a plan of onboarding where during the first week you get... Uh, company, let's say, through the different areas of the company, so you understand everything. Mm -hmm. But not only that, but you also get trained on your specific area. So what we did is we built a, a academy kind of, of e-learning platform that mm -hmm. we do internally, that we use internally. So whoever comes in, they're sure to have all the documentation that will help them get on board as fast as possible and get all the answers answered, all the questions answered. Uh, in order for them to ramp up as much as possible. So, yeah, that's a, a good way to, to try that. So, so how long do you reckon it is before somebody sort of starting and, and then being then sort of starting to sort of push code to production or write code or, or design something? Is yeah, it, is sure. Is it days or is it weeks or is it months? Or? Yeah, well, it all depends on the area, of course. I mean, if you're from finance or, let's say, from the, from the operation side, that will take from one week to two weeks to be fully operative. Mm -hmm. If you're on sales, maybe a little bit more because you still have to understand a, a product and a solution that's kind of mm -hmm. complex, but you know how to sell. So mm -hmm. that part you have it covered. Yeah. Now, what we do here, it's, it's something that it's not like you would say, I don't know, it's another e-commerce platform or an e on another store or something like that. So people who come here, they've never done anything like that. Mm -hmm. And um, we use a lot of technologies in a very... Uh, we try to be very, very emergent, like very new technologies. Mm -hmm. So it sometimes takes a little while. Uh, but I will say that for product people, it takes around a month. And uh, okay. to be fully aware of everything what is going on and like you can leave them alone and have their own decisions made and that, that's perfect. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on support or code, that's less, that, let's say like around mm -hmm. two, three weeks, that depending on, on what mm -hmm. we're doing. But we, uh, I always tell them... Uh, I rather they go slow, but they really understand what they're doing. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting balance because you know it used to be fashionable, you know, move fast and break things, uh, you know, and that that sort of approach has definitely sort of started to become turned on its head and is starting to be you know questioned now. Not 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 just in the media or public community, but but mm -hmm. in the startup community as well now, where you see you know, issues around security and privacy, you know. Maybe, maybe you know, a little bit more slowly and considered is is better than sort of fast and reckless. Um, yeah. However, you know, some some people are still still definitely pursuing that, and, and it seems to be working. Yeah, and some people can afford it. I mean, if if you're mm. working on an area that has no legal impact of what you're doing, mm. well, you can be reckless and and kind of try new stuff. But if you're working on a tech startup with a legal background and you're working with people's IPs, you want to be a little bit more more conservative on that side mm. so yeah i guess it all depends on what you're working on yeah it's the same with us you know if we were you know obviously we 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 offer sort of you know banking um and the financial services and you know the one thing we can't afford to get wrong is when somebody goes to pay for something that not working so exactly that's something will take a lot of time and effort over getting right and changing however, or the security as yeah well. and the security yeah however you know offering products on the app or third-party products or an affiliate link or something yeah you know, we, we can afford to move really quickly on that you know the mm -hmm. damage to the customer will be you know non-existent or, or nil and the risk you know the, so the, therefore the risk can be much smaller therefore we can operate i think one of the Definitely. things we've done quite well is compartmentalizing that okay this is this is where it's you know pricing onboarding and paying for stuff you know they, those are the things that are protected considered you know need six eyes sign off that sort of thing you know, this other stuff, you know, you know, what your spending looks like, you know, we can change that again and again and again really quickly with no significant customer detriment if, if for example, stuff went, went wrong or was down for, for minutes. And we can recover quite quickly as well. So yeah, that's quite good. So, but, but let's really dive into this onboarding thing because I think it's super interesting because as a startup, you never have to worry about it. You sort of look right, look rough, and then your onboarding is done. 
obviously when you get to the companies where you you are and we are you know in terms of the sort of the numbers of people this is so much you know this is so more important in terms of not just the hard stuff in you know I mean, you know, learning process, learning the code base, but also the soft stuff. How the companies make decisions. How do we work here? What's the culture? How 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 have you managed to include the soft stuff in your onboarding so that people sort of know sort of what the what the unwritten rules are or how, or how to get on or how to do well? Yeah, that's something that we do. I really like how the way we we have this in our culture. Um, I mean, when you grow so fast and you're trying to make, you know, like your objectives on every team and everything. It's, it could be easily silo the different the organization. And um, I think one part of, of having this kind of, of size of a company is that you still could have a very open um, culture and have everyone talked around. So from day one, the onboarding process, whenever whichever person joins from whatever team goes through the same, let's say, basics of the process, which mm-hmm. is understanding the structure of the company, the culture of the company, who is sales and how they do it, who is marketing. Just quickly, can, can I dive into the culture? Sort of, how do you do yeah. that? Is is that somebody? Is it a video? Is it the CEO? How how do you how do you tell people this is this is our culture? Sure. So this this is um, um, piloted by the HR team, uh, all the recruiters and onboarding. Uh, they have once people join here, they already have all the th- all the first week, let's say, organized. So they have meetings with responsibles from different areas where they will teach them stuff. It's a one-to-one meeting. Mm-hmm. And in some cases, we also provide uh, like a little academy kind of e-learning uh, studio for just basic IP knowledge. So everyone in the company gets to learn a little bit about IP protection. Uh, and then they, they talk to the different managers on the different area. So they explain the different culture, how it's organized the team, what they do on the daily work, what their objectives are. So from day one, they are already being part of, of the organization and a lot of information is being shared. So this happens throughout the first week that every single business area mm-hmm. has, has this time to talk to the new guys, let's say. And during the first week, for example, as well, we also do like go with a red pointer for lunch and, and you pair up people from different teams so this, this conversation gets some going from day one. Other stuff that we do throughout the year, uh, we always have um, our last Thursday of the month beers at, at our terrace where we encourage a lot of people to have mingle and talk about the different projects they're doing. Mm-hmm. That's, that's great. That's where you, a lot of great ideas for new projects come from. So, so you're working on that and you're working on that and I can take the data for that. Let's, let's get together and do something about that. Ah, so yeah. that's interesting. Um, also, we do ca- quarterly reviews um, with our okay. CEO and C level. So we get all together. We explain the objectives, where we're mm-hmm. going, what okay. what's the strategy, so everyone's uh, aware of where we're going. The whole team together. Mm-hmm. And, and, and does anybody has access to that? Everybody can. Is everybody in the meeting, or is that everyone's shared? in the meeting? Everyone's okay. in the meeting. There's a documentation for that. So. Transparency is very important as well in this kind of, of, of onboardings. In the, if you want people to be active from day one, they have to be able to find the resources they need to make sure their, their job is easy and not, not have to also challenge them into finding information. So that is also, also very yeah, pro, proactively done here. And, and mm. uh, we get to share a lot of information pros from different teams and inside the team as well. Okay. So that is something from day one. That's really interesting. I think this is this 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 makes a good segue as well. You know, obviously we drilled out quite a lot into to onboarding. You know, because it's scale up. You're trying to execute while you're trying to build the plane, fly the plane, find new pilots, find places to land planes, yeah. all at the same time. I think you know, getting people in and up to speed is 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 so important because you've got to execute and you can't let new people slow you down. You've got to take the hit, invest in them. But then you need to get faster and faster as a business rather than slower and slower as you have these more people. So let's look at the other half of the, you know, let's look at the other half of that. One is onboarding, getting mm-hmm. new speed. Let's look at the other half, if that's okay, which is you know, okay, how how do your teams execute? How do you get your teams to execute? How do you keep them on track or keep them up to speed and and live up to the sort of the what the CEO has said, you know, at your quarterly review, you know, this is what we're gonna do. How do you how do you help that? How do you help the team do that? Yeah, that's a lot of a lot of, of management there, uh, managing our leadership, let's say, skills. 
First of all, as I was telling you, transparency. So anyone inside our company knows our roadmap. Like that's that's not a secret in our company. We share it. We understand it. We, we explain it so people know why we're doing things and how we're going to get there. So if we're all in the same boat, we all know where the map is and where we're heading and how fast and who has to, you know, row in which direction. So transparency is important, very important. We share this information across everywhere. Uh, of course, there's a lot of, of communication between teams, like any mm -hmm. and like any other company. Our product team has its own stakeholders, so each product has its, its team of stakeholders, which are from every single other area in the company. And we have meetings very often, so they can see the, the you know that every sprint planning we have, what's going on, what's going to happen, what we're building, what we're prioritizing. So across that, everyone's aware, and uh, we keep so how on. Do you do that? Yeah. I'd, like, I'd love to hear more. So, so, oh. so, say I'm in a team. What do I do? What do I do as one of your teams? Yeah. How do I get input? How do I? How do I? How do I live that transparency? Yeah. So, I mean, first of all, documentation is everything. Is is the confluence? You know, across the company, everywhere, everywhere, all the information is there. So that's that's a good point to start. And uh, all about the the meetings and the processes. Well, it's just a basically agile communication where we mm -hmm. have. You know our priority meetings with stakeholders. We do dual dual track um, kind of, of of roadmap. I mean roadmap of planification. So we sit down with the different stakeholders from the company, define what we're going to be defining this week or this sprint. What else are we going to be planning on, on on building this sprint? And as I was telling you before, in the product team, we also take care of support and Q and um, the, the QA part. Mm -hmm. So we also train on whoever in the company or the customers are going to start using the feature, create a lot of communication. And uh, of course, when the sprint is done, you know, demo the features, bring it to production, have everyone on board. Uh, and this is just so, a so lot just, of effort. Just, in just quickly, how, how long are your sprints? Are they sort of two weeks, three weeks? Three weeks. We do three mm. weeks sprints. Okay. Yeah. So you, you, I was curious because two weeks sprint is, is not very much time oh. at all to get stakeholders mm. in a room, get yeah. them aligned, get them agreed to something and then build it. That's really, yeah. you know, three weeks. You know, I think Microsoft obviously used to run three weeks as well. But that's amazing. You know, you, for three weeks, you can go from nothing to deciding to build something to it being released. Is that is that true? Is that Definitely. Yeah, but we do a dual track. So on the first, the first, let's say like it cascades into the second uh, one. So with okay. it, on one line, we're defining things. The mm. product team is talking to stakeholders or talking to customers if they're having to do interviews, yeah. you know, like contrasting wireframes, doing a, a user experience testing. This kind of thing happens on the first part mm. that whatever is defined goes in the second part of the, of okay. the backlog onto the, let's say, building side of the backlog. Okay. And are they the, the same thing. people? Are they always the same people involved in both parts of that? Or have you split that out? Or? No, it's split it. So okay. uh, in, um, we all together, I mean, split not physically, well, we are mm. all together in the same area, which is something very important for us. Mm. Again, a big part of scaling up is knowing what is happening and where should I go right now. So mm. uh, we, we don't want to be feel, have people feeling like they're lost. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, what we want to do is empower people to be uh, self-sufficient, and in case they have some questions, ask for ask for help. Don't get stopped just because you don't know where to go next. So we work all together. Teams are in different squads depending on the products. Um, we have our daily meetups, our st daily stand-ups. We do our retrospectives at the end of the sprints all together. And we keep this communication flowing. So even though it's different teams building different products, we make sure that everyone gets um, some kind of rotation throughout the year and they all get to work on the different products. That also helps a lot because uh, the backbone of our technology is the same for everyone. So okay. they, they get to see it on different levels. I can imagine you, you that, that's really interesting because we sort of have dedicated teams and so you know we have a personal we have personal accounts because we've got a personal account we'll always have a personal account team mm -hmm. um and what we felt is that allows domain experience and knowledge both of the customer that that applies to the code base uh the team um the business that, that sits around that as well and then if they know all those things then they can make the right decision but mm -hmm. the, the trade-off we get with that is you know, people can be in that team for quite a period of time and think one of the things we're getting feedback on that we need to change is to allow people to sort of, you know, over time, you know, move and, 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 and sort of get that experience more broadly. 
some some of that's done through peer reviews of code. You know, teams always review another team's code, so that helps mm -hmm. sort of disseminate the information and understanding. But I think you've you've done a sort of great job of solving you know solving actually allowing engineers to be a bit more mobile and, and experience different parts of the code, which is which is fantastic. Yeah, definitely, and and they evaluate that a lot. I mean, if you're building like crazy and you're stuck in the same product, you might want to be you know changing a little bit the plan of what you're doing. So they also value that and the idea that they can get to move from one product to another seat on a different way and bring new insights to, to the team. Mm. So, so yeah, that, that, that is something very valued by, by the developers themselves. No, I think I think I think I think I completely agree. I think sort of bringing sort of new blood into the team can definitely can do that. You can, they're the people who can ask, why do we do it this way? And yeah. you know, if the answer's, we've always done it this way, that's obviously not a great answer. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that allows people to sort of to think through. I mean, I love the fact you picked up on sort of the main themes, which I sort of heard coming through there was sort of leadership, transparency, and understanding. I think that's just so important. Um, mm -hmm. And I think the, your, your role as a VP of product and, and my role in products as well, you know, you, I definitely try and that's where I spend most of my time. I, I'd love to sort of get into the leadership bit a bit more. Sort mm -hmm. of what do you define your role as a leader and how has that changed sort of? In, in sort of let's sort of contain it to execution but how has that changed as your company's grown from sort of a handful of people to sort of handfuls of people your teams of yeah people? i mean it of course it had changed i mean maybe at the very beginning you're very focused on the product on building the product itself and uh, you have to learn to let go let's say it's, it's kind of like the same mm -hmm. what happens with a with a ceo no when when, there's, when a startup is very small, the CEO is, knows everything about everything. They're working mm -hmm. on everywhere. But as soon as it starts growing, they have to delegate and get, you know, a C-level that it's, it takes care of a lot of things and mm -hmm. can be able to make decisions without them being involved on every single part of that. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's kind of the same with when you have a team of five and then become a team of 50 in product. Mm -hmm. um, you have to start to delegate. You have to delegate. And that's, that's the part where onboarding and wrapping up ramping up the people it's so important because once they feel independent and they, they know the, the goals and the transparency to, mm -hmm. to know where they have to go they can you can delegate on them and say and see they're going to take there not because you're not going to do it anymore but because the different teams are you know we started with one product now we have three products or four mm -hmm. depending on how you see it and then you have a lot of other people involved so you cannot be on top of everything all the time so, so, so do you have any preconditions before you delegate or do you just, you know, I think there's a number of ways you can do it. You can go, I'm going to hire the right people and then I can delegate to them pretty much as soon as they arrive or, or I can sort of delegate to them over time or I can only, once they've proved themselves, then sort of delegate. Which sort of model do you sort of follow? It depends on the situation. So, uh, I mean, I like hiring different types of profiles. Uh, that is something we do a lot. We give opportunities to very junior profiles, to very senior profiles. I think they all learn from each other. If you have, I know that everyone says like, yeah, but if you have a very stable group of, of seniors, it's better. Yeah, but you know, the young people, they also bring a lot to the table. Mm. So uh, at least on the, on the, on the six POs I have in, in my team, I have a mixture of seniority and juniors. Mm. And some of them, could be able to just land in the company. Okay, here are you know, the guidelines and take it from there. Others need some kind of, of guidance. And that's great because that's part of also bringing back. No, you want to share and, and help them learn how to do things and mm. not only teach them, but also let them figure that out. And when you pair these teams together and these profiles together, it's great because they challenge each other. I mean, not, not, in, a, not in a bad way, but in a way that, whoa, I, I didn't think of that the way you were thinking it right now. And that's not always based on experience. So bringing new people in always, always helps. And uh, I think this, this balance of juniors and seniors, it's always, um, yeah, beneficial for the whole company. Definitely. Mm. I think that's, I think, I think you're so right in terms of it's context dependent. You know, I've done a lot of, you know, both in part of my previous career in the military, but also my master's and everything else is focusing on, on leadership. And, and you're right, it's, it's so content dependent. It can depend on, on the people that you're leading. It can depend on the context, it can tend, you know, uh, the problem you're facing. You know, I think you're so, you're so right. I think you're right in terms of 
trying to get a sense for that. But also balance. What I loved about it is, is you're sort of taking risk in some areas with some junior people and you're not taking risk in other areas that allows you to be more flexible, but also more diverse, I imagine, as a sort of, as a group of people. I imagine the thinking, the thinking is more diverse if you just heard, you know, hired sort of monolithic, very senior people. Is yeah, that's something very important at Redpoints. For example, this is something that uh, not very easily, but we, we achieved, a, I think it's a 46% of our company are female. I mean, and the whole company. I mean, just in the sea level, three of us are female. So that is just one part of the diversity. Great importance in nationalities, in different mm -hmm. studies, people from social studies, people from mathematics, people from engineering. And uh, putting all these together makes a lot of, of, of effort in, it takes a lot of effort from the whole company mm -hmm. to you know, focus on, on bringing all these different profiles to make it work all together. But the, the benefit of that is such a, such a big benefit that I think it, it, it well deserves the, the investment. I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think that, you know, there's the old African proverb, isn't there? Sort of, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go further, you know, go with other people. Mm -hmm. And you're right, but there is the overhead. There is, there's always this sort of both cross-cultural leadership, but also as you're more diverse, you, know, you have more discussions. And those more discussions, however fruitful they are, they can, if not managed well, you know, yeah. can potentially lead to paralysis by analysis or, oh, yeah. or interpersonal yeah. problems as people, some cultures are more combative than others, um, yeah. which is- that's where I, uh, Yeah, that's where I think it's very important to have a very transparent and very clear line of what our objectives are, where do we want to go and planning. So a roadmap plan, I, I mean, it doesn't have to be with dates or whatever, but you do know what you're going to do on this quarter. What is the focus? What are we going to try to do this? And not only from the product side or the dev team, but what is marketing doing to achieve this? What is sales doing to achieve this? So you know that, again, you're not alone. If, even if you bring, you develop the best feature, whatever, if no one sells it or no one communicates it or the customer success team that's not communicated also to the to the existing customers well it's going nowhere so mm. it's a, a, a whole team effort and i mean without a good communication that's just basically mm. impossible to do brilliant i'd love to dive in now you've talked about delegation and the, and the sort of prerequisites of delegation and i said yeah you know, what, what happens so you've delegated now how do you how do you sort of keep the speed up and you know you've delegated a lot of power to the teams which is amazing and something that we try to do quite heavily here at minis as well how do you then keep the pressure on and keep the acceleration when you sort of delegated a lot of power to people yeah so me personally, what I'm doing is, I mean, I do delegate in, in areas that I'm, I'm able to, like, well, well, I feel more comfortable to. So my machine learning team, the R&D team, they're delegated. They know what the goals for, you know, proof of concepts we have on this quarter, and then they I'll let them do and bring results. And, and we have these dialogues. Mm -hmm. Same thing with support, QA, and the data team. But for example, with the product owners, I manage them myself. So mm. I'm, I have constant meetings with them, even if they're just work meetings because they want to you know, bounce off ideas or have some interviews with some customers. Um, we have a weekly meeting on, depending on the product, each product to see how, how it's evolving, how things are, are, are going forward. If they're stuck somewhere because maybe they haven't received any information or they need some help somewhere mm. or taking a decision. And that also, of course, that is super useful for me. I mean, for me, it's super valuable. I need to be not on top of it, but I really need to know what is going on with the products, how they're building um, in order to be agile. I mean, if we see that one of them is, is uh, losing its power or not moving forward as fast as we want it, we'll figure it out right away and or act accordingly, either move some resources in or reevaluate where we have again it's a it's a if it's a team a team thing and we know that something is not going to be there well you have to let know the other team so they can also rearrange accordingly so for me managing the product parts it's super important there are some areas i can delegate and of course these guys take that day to day on every single day and they take the decisions i might just be there first for into you know getting knowing what is going on understanding mm -hmm. how, what they're doing and help them move through the through the process and, and getting the best results ever i, lo I love the you know, when i when i've asked some people that question you know it's about management it's about driving to results it's quite aggressive quite masculine and 
Whereas, whereas you are a lot more sort of, it's about support. It's about guidance. It's about transparency. It's about helping teams that have got issues and fixing the problems. And, and I, you know, I share that view hundred percent. And I think that's definitely the, the much more healthy and helpful view. Mm. You know, do you want to be beaten up over a delayed deadline or do you want somebody coming in and saying, look, how can I help? I think, you know, I definitely, I definitely know which one I prefer. And it's, it's amazing yeah. to see that. That's why I was mentioning the part of, of hiring the correct people, not because they're seniors or not, but for me, something that's super important is hiring people who are responsible and a team player. Mm -hmm. So if you're a team player and you're slacking off and you you know you're not going to finish your feature or whatever, I, I'm a, I, I will expect from you, even if you're a junior or you're a senior, I'll expect from you saying, hey, I'm not going to make it. We have to do something about it. And that's mm -hmm. okay. I mean, things happen and problems happen. And uh, what, you, what, what matters is what you do with them. Mm. Do you try to hide them and then say nothing till the end of the sprint and then surprise? Like you're gonna, something's gonna happen there. Mm. So it's not, uh, it's very, how do you say it? It's very uh, in, um, reinforcement on, on sharing when you have a problem. It's not a bad thing. It's not like being, hey, I'm weak, I have a problem. Yeah. It's, hey, I have this. There's, it's like a new challenge for the team. Like how can we, manage to get this thing done or move forward this and uh, that's the very part uh, the big big part of knowing who you're hiring so if they, they're team players that's amazing if mm -hmm. they're responsible of their own job of their own work i mean it's all about the the, the culture of flexibility i mean i, I don't care if you, if you enter to the office at 8 a.m or 9 p or 9 a.m or do x or whatever schedule you do you know what you have to do and you know yeah. what you need to do to make that thing happen. And that kind of responsibility is the part that it's, it's intrinsic to each person. It, it, it's really interesting because I think one of the two things that we're now the finding that are so highly correlated with performance is in terms of hiring. And we've hired, we've, we've hired quite a lot of people recently. And what we found is people who are mature, and I'm not meaning super experienced or old, I mean emotionally mature, and they're the people who say, look, as soon as they've got a problem, I've got a problem. I think I could fix it these, you know, in a number of ways, but I need some help. Here's some help. And I'd like some help with this. And I'd like some help yeah. to, uh, to move it forward. And it, you know, we've, one of the things we now look for in the product leads is, is two things which are really important. Uh, there's a lot more that's obviously important. Yeah. Which is, do they have a repeated pattern or cons of consistent performance? And, and do we think they will speak up if there's an issue or somebody, um, or, or they think they need some help. And, you know, and that's the, one of the highest correlations we've got with people who are really high performers. Yeah, definitely. I mean, and if you're trying to build a company with a portfolio of products, which is our case, we have different mm. kind of products, uh, team players is a way to be. If you're a loner, you know, that it, it, you might be the most senior person and super experienced, but if you just, try to go by yourself it's it's there's companies and companies and you might not fit feel or fit in our company because mm -hmm. we want to go all together as a team yeah and whatever you're doing has to be communicated in any ways to other parts of the organization so that is very important they have to be team players mm -hmm. and i think yes you're completely right yeah the Software development and product development is no longer a, a, a one-person game anymore. No. It's it's not even a one-team game. It's a team of teams game. You, right. you try to you try to contain it to allow the teams to, to do as much as possible and try to make information flow as freely as possible and and yeah and trying to help the teams work together. But you, I think you're so right. It's about uh, team collaborations. I think I think we're, we're drawing into a close. I think it was a lovely place to end. I think we've had a whistle stop tour of everything from you know onboarding and execution, leadership, transparency. I think for me, what I've taken from this is the, the, the two very high levels, which is you know execution is about in scale ups is about bringing new people up to speed because you're a scale up and that's what you're doing. And then once the teams and people are there, it's about focusing on execution. And helping people, I think, you know, if we break that down, onboarding was about the hard and the soft skills. It's the hard yeah. skills about this is what you need to do and the soft skills, you know, culture. This is how we work. This is how we work with each other. This is how we handle conflict. Um, 
so that people understand both. And then if you break down execution, you know, it's about, you know, building it yourself. And then when you can't build it yourself anymore, it's about finding people you can delegate to, finding people you can trust and delegate to, and then help them be successful. And what yeah. I loved about your, you know, what I loved about your talk was, it was about helping those people being successful. And I've learned an amazing amount. Of you. I'd love to hear any sort of final thoughts or comments you, you have before we wrap up. Yeah, well, definitely just try to empower the best of the best that you have in your team. So if you help them be the best they can be, they're going to be happy. So happy people do a lot of happy work and uh, uh, they're going to be, they're going to feel part of the culture um, and just improve so much better for themselves that you will see that impact in the whole company. So I will definitely go that, that way, the empowering part. I what, what, a, what a lovely sentence to end on, you know, help people be the best they can be. And that, you know, and that will help everybody meet their potential and, and help your company meet its potential. You know, yeah. Thank you so much, um, Dinavara, for, for, for your time. I certainly loved it and learned a great deal and got some thoughts bubbling about where I go next and, and how many skills, which is fantastic. I'd love to carry on the conversation later or afterwards, but, but now let's draw it to a close. Uh, again, I just want to point everybody to a previous podcast where we've talked about um, how to identify value and how to get your teams focusing on that value. And today we've heard once you found it, how do you execute against it? Uh, again, you can look at the old podcast or at scaleupvalley.com forward slash community um, to find out more. Um, I think we're going to end it there. I think uh, just again, a final thank you. My name is Max Eskel. I'm the head of product for, for Moniz. Um, thank you very much for listening and please get in touch with myself or Danae or any other of the team and we'd be happy to further, further the conversation or ask any questions you have. Thank you very much.